It takes 79 men to operate this turret and its three guns. Incidentally, this is a three-gun turret, not a triple-gun turret. That means each gun can elevate independently of the others. These 16-inch guns are the main armament on the BB-61 class ships. And you'll find three turrets with a total of nine guns. The combined rate of fire is over 18 rounds a minute. But you can see only a small part of it from out here. Come on inside and see what this modern 16-inch turret structure is really like. As you can see here, it's topped off by an armored gun house. Below that is the rotating structure resting on the roller path. Below the roller path and surrounded by a circular armored cylinder, slides, three powder trunks, sighting, elevating, and training stations, a projectile hoist and cradle for each gun. Additionally, there is the turret officer's booth containing the range finder and local fire control equipment. Between the shelf plate, or gun deck, and the pan plate are the three gun pits. The power equipment for elevating the guns is located on the pan plate. Just below the pan plate is the electric deck. Here, the main power equipment for training the guns is located. The two decks immediately below are the upper and lower projectile handling platforms. Each platform consists of two concentric sections. The outer section is a stationary projectile stowage area. The inner section is a projectile handling ring and a second projectile stowage area and is part of the rotating structure. However, this projectile ring has its own power drive and can be rotated independently of the turret. The very bottom deck contains the powder handling room, completely surrounded by the magazines. Unlike case guns, the 16-inch is a bag gun. This adds considerably to the danger of spilled powder and the resultant increased fire hazard. Thus, all compartments are separated by flame-proof bulkheads to prevent any flame or lethal gas from spreading throughout the turret. Well, there, in general, is what a turret actually looks like, from top to bottom. You won't need to concern yourself now with training or elevating, or even about plotting, range finding, or fire control. This film will give you a general idea of what happens after all that has been taken care of. The powder handling operation begins in the powder handling room at the very bottom. Here, under the supervision of a petty officer, Three powder door operators and nine powder passers keep the powder bags moving to the powder hoists. The scuttle operators take the powder bags from the magazine scuttles and hand them to the powder passers. When six bags have been placed in the powder car, the doors are closed, and the car starts up through the hoist trunk to the gun room. Unlike powder hoists for case guns, these operate more like an elevator, with a car that moves the powder up through the trunk by means of a cable. However, powder won't be of much use without projectiles, and there's a crew for each of the two projectile handling levels. Under the supervision of a petty officer, there are three projectile hoist operators, one ring operator, nine projectile men, and a roving electrician. First, the projectile ring operator brings the bullets close to the hoist by moving the ring as much as necessary. You'll remember, of course, that this projectile ring operates independently of the turret rotating structure. Since these projectiles weigh over 2,500 pounds apiece, it's easy to see why special parbuckling equipment is required to move them around. When the projectile man and hoist operator have the projectile in position, the hoist is started and the projectile is on its way. Constant communication between the turret officer's compartment 
and both the projectile and powder handling rooms keeps the rounds coming as they're needed by the gun crews. Here in the gun house, it will be easy to see that we're working with only the crew of a single gun. Each gun crew consists of a gun captain, a cradle operator, a rammer operator, and finally, a primer man. As soon as the projectile arrives at the top of the hoist, it stops in the cradle. In most smaller and newer guns, loading can be accomplished at any angle of elevation. But these big 16-inch guns must be brought to 5 degrees elevation. When the gun is in loading position, the gun captain opens the breech. Then the cradle and spanning tray can be tipped by a hydraulic cylinder to align with the bore of the gun. When the spanning tray is in position, the rammer operator rams the projectile into the gun. The rammer is retracted and the gun is ready for the powder bags. Now the powder trunk door is opened and three powder bags are rolled into the tray. Then the powder car moves down and three more bags are rolled into the tray. All six bags are now rammed slowly into the gun. That's right, six bags, each one about 18 inches long and 18 inches in diameter. The rammer is retracted. Now the cradle operator raises the cradle and, and turns the ready switch to ready. The gun automatically goes back to firing position and the firing circuit can be completed. The return of the gun to firing position automatically flashes a gun ready signal to the turret officer's control panel and the gun is ready for firing. When the recoil and counter recoil action are complete, the gun returns to the loading position automatically. When the gun captain begins to open the breech, the gas ejection system automatically blows the bore clean of gas or any burning fragments. Now the gun is ready for the next round and the cycle starts again. Of course, all you've seen are the actual steps required to load and fire only one gun. Now when you multiply that by three and you want to keep them firing, there's a lot more that goes on. Not four, but 13 men are handling powder. Not four, but 15 men operating each projectile flat and both flats being used. Then there are four men on the machinery floor, three powder hoist operators, 12 men working in the gun compartments, six at the site stations, and eight men in the turret officer's booth. A lot of men. But as we said in the beginning, it's a lot of turret too. As a heavy bombardment weapon against shore installations as much as 20 miles inland, the 16-inch gun is a valuable and accurate weapon. Even under ideal circumstances, you could see only about 14 miles from the deck of a battleship. But with these ships 20 miles apart, it's possible to land a salvo of 16-inch projectiles accurately on the target. Although firing, of course, can be directed from each turret individually, gun laying and firing is usually accomplished from remotely located directors operating through a central fire control system. Although this particular 16-inch 50 caliber gun is on the Iowa class BB, the operations are similar in all 16-inch turrets. Of course, this ordinance is designed for accurate firing of either armor piercing or high capacity projectiles against surface targets or shore installations. Either way, Slamming into a target at the rate of two a minute from each gun, they can do plenty of damage. An outstanding case where it's better to give than to receive.